Hallelujah. I'm here tonight about to go live on a speaking call. So I'm going to share with you all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just waiting for some of y'all to come on. Hi. Glory to God. Hey, y'all. I'm speaking on a call, but they're on um, mute. So I'm going to share this word with y'all because I've been meaning to speak it out. So I'm just preparing my scriptures. Hallelujah. I believe that the Lord is going to do a mighty work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a word the Lord gave me. He gave me a um, vision as I woke up in the middle of the night to intercede. And so that's what I'm going to share on the on the line that I'm on. And I'm going to share it here with you guys because I wanted to make sure that I shared this on my channel as well. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I'm just getting all of my scriptures ready. As the person who is praying is going forth, I'm getting my scriptures ready so that I can go forth after her. And then I'm just going to go straight into the word because I'm on a prayer line that I've been invited to speak on. And so I wanted to kind of kill two birds with one stone and minister this word here so I didn't have to repeat it. So this is what I'm actually... Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I'm preparing and I pray, but this is giving people time to get on as well. Share this if you're available to. Glory to God. So I'll ask their questions after I minister. I'll stay on and answer questions, but I'm about to get into this word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, I'm on the line. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just pray before I get into this word. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you and I praise you. I pray, I praise you and I thank you for this prophetic uh, revelation. I thank you for a word for such a time as this. I thank you that you give us strategies for how to fight. You are the Lord God who teaches our hands to war and our fingers to fight. You teach us spiritual warfare. It is not by power nor by might, but by your spirit that we do battle, that we pull down every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. And then we lift up your word. You said, I have lifted up my word in my name and I have lifted my word above all my name. And so we thank you tonight, Father God. We thank you. Hallelujah. And give you glory for what you have um, prepared for us tonight. And so I just pray that it be all of you and, and less of me, none of me, that you would increase and I would decrease as this word goes forth so that I could be on target and hit the mark on tonight in Jesus name. Amen. Now, um, I was in intercessory prayer uh, last week. The Lord woke me up in the middle of the night. And as I was praying, um, he began to speak to me. And so what I want to talk to you about tonight is hedges and that we are called to be repairers of the breach. And he gave me some scriptures and some verses. So I want to go there with you and just minister this word to you really quick, because I believe this is where we're at. And as I began to pray, I began to realize that we have a lot of that, um, that hedges. He began to show me in the spirit that things were happening in certain places in certain ways because the hedges had been removed. And so, but instead of taking me to Ezekiel, he took me to Job. So I want to start there. In Job verse one, chapter one, verse 10, it says, 
the the devil is talking to the Lord and he says, have not you made a hedge around him speaking about Job and his household? And all that he has on every side, you have, Lord, bless your word. You have blessed the works of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all he has and he will curse you openly to your face. Let me go up and read from the beginning really quickly up at um, chapter six. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? And Satan said to the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, you have not considered, have you not considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth a blameless man, an upright man, and one who fears the Lord and shuns evil. So I want you to pay attention to that. But I also want you to hear, so Satan said unto the Lord, does God fear Job for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him? So write that word down, a hedge around him and his household. So that's his body, his household, all that he has on every side. You have blessed the works of his hands. That's four. And you have increased his and have increased, have increased in the land and his possessions have increased in the land. So that's five. So it's five things. It's him, his household. It is the works of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. And so this is the reason why I'm saying this because these are hedges that God puts up around us. So God says to Satan, he says, um, behold, all that he, all that he has is in his, is in your power. Only do not lay your hands on his person. And if we go to chapter two, what people don't always tune into is that in chapter two, the Satan comes back and he says, and it says that again, the sons of God came and Satan was with them. And that he said again to the Lord, the Lord said, where have you been? And we go through this again. And then he asked him, have you considered my servant Job? And the Lord said to Satan and that Satan said, um, Skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has, he will give up for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. So then he, he touched his body. So before that, if we, if we read down in chapter one, we see that Job's possessions, his children, everything was touched. Every hedge was removed except for that around his body. We see the calamity of his sons and daughters. We see the calamity of, of the house and all that he had, his cattle and his land. So every hedge that was mentioned the, was removed. Now there's something about hedges that the Lord showed me that when hedges are up, then you are blessed. So it says that he, you have hedged him in on every side. And so sometimes we wonder why people, they are simple, you know, they're not, you know, they may not be in ministry or anything like that, but they have these blessed lives where they increase more and more because it says when you have a hedge that um, his household is blessed um, the works of his hands are blessed and his possessions increase in the land and, and he is blessed. And so these are hedges. When you are protected by the hedges, then everything prospers. We, a hedge is removed for two reasons. Either God is testing you or you have violated a spiritual law and you have removed a hedge. It has created a breach. And we're called to be repairs of the breach. And so we see here about the hedges. And so God is calling us to be repairs of the breach. He is calling us to repair the breach. And so that's what standing in the gap is about. And so when we go to Ezekiel, I'm going to use, I believe, 2230. That's the one I want to go to. It, we see it spoken of in 13, but I'm going to go to 2230 for this particular one because this is the one that we all know. And this one says 2230, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. 
So I sought for a man among them who would make up the wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. I have compensate, recompensed their deeds on their own heads. So let's go back up to verse 30. I sought for a man among them who would make up the wall and stand in the gap before me, before the land, but I found none. So I want to give you some definitions. So make up the wall or in the King James uh, version, let me read that to you out of there because it has the same, it has a different word, but it means repairer. It's the same word for repair of the breach. It's the same word. And so God is saying something here. to repair, to make up, to build. So let me just go there really quick and, and read it out of the King James Version. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge. That's what I wanted you to see. That should make up the hedge. He uses the same word hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. I should not destroy it, but I found none. Okay. So here is this word hedge again. And so the word hedge means garden, uh, um, cir um, circumventilation. It means a fence, a wall. Let me, let me just go here from my notes are, it means an enclosure. It means a fence and a wall. Right. So this is what this hedge means. And then to make up or repair the wall. So the hedge is the noun. It is a thing to make up the wall is to close. So you have an enclosure, but to make up or to repair the wall is to enclose it uh, uh, to wall in around to close up. So we come in to and we repair where there needs to be, where there was once a closure. We come in and we stand in that place and we close it back up. So he calls us to make up or to build up or to be repairers of these walls. Um, and then there is the word stand in the gap. It means to abide, to dwell, to stay, to raise up. And the gap is a place that means a breaking forth a breach to break through. And I'm giving these definitions because I want to put it together. And he says, before me, we cannot miss that word before me. It's the word panim and it means face or presence or the bread of the presence. It's the same word in Romans 8, 28 or 8, is it 28 that says all things work together for the good of those that are called according to the good of those that love the Lord, that are the called according to his purpose. If you look up that word in the Greek, it will take you back to the Hebrew and say panim, purpose, in the face of God in his presence. It means the very word face. So he says before me. So we are supposed to stand in the gap before the Lord. That means we enter into his presence. So as prophetic intercessors, as those who are praying, that's those who are on this call, we are supposed to do this work before the Lord. And so here we are. Let me go to Isaiah 58 mm -mm. and verse 12. He's talking about prayer and fasting. He's talking about <clears throat> what a real fast is. And he gives a whole bunch of things. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, doing work on my holy day, if, um, and if you speak, uh, nor speaking your own words, he goes through all of these things before and after. And he said, those from among you, after he says what this people looks like, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as a new day. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be a well, like a well-watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fade. 
fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. In the King James, it says, let me just go there because I'm reading out of the New King James. And they that shall be of these shall build the old waste places. They shall raise up the foundations of many generations and they shall be called the repairer of the breach. It's the same word, gadar, that means a fence, a wall, an enclosure. It, no, it is, the, it is the action. It is the one who does it. It is, a, it is the repairer. It is the building up of the hedge. You shall be a repairer of the breach. Parrots to break. The same thing that we see that he says in Ezekiel about the head, the gap is the breach and the breach is the gap. And so he calls us to be repairers of the breach, of the break. So there is a break in the gate and in the fence, not only in our in our nation, but in our cities, in our families. And you can tell when a spiritual law has been broken, when there has been a violation or a trespass or an iniquity, which is sin that has been practiced so long that it becomes normal or a trespass where you have violated someone else or God in the spirit because a hedge is removed. And so when you see something happening to you, the first thing that we do is we say, God, is this a test? Because we've just read in Job that if the hedges are up and the Bible says that he's a fence all around us. When we read Psalm 91, it says that he's a fence, that he's a shelter, that he's our covering, that we abide under in the secret place of the most high. So when we remove when a hedge is removed if god has not tested us which we need to ask god am i being tested because it says the trying of your faith is more precious than gold and think it not strange that you are being tested and tried but sometimes it is that we have violated a spiritual law in unforgiveness in some form of practice sin that we may not even think is a big deal because in our religious view, we're doing all the religious things, but are we gossiping? Are we trespassing people? Are we, what, are we backbiting? Are we constant complainers that kept the children of Israel out of the wilderness? So religious people often like to say, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't cuss, I don't hang with those that do. And some do that, but they still put themselves in a separate box for their for their good works, their works of the law versus good works. And so we want to make sure that we're not overlooking because the Lord said obedience is better than sacrifice. And so the children of Israel got to a place where they were serving him, but they weren't serving him with their whole heart. They weren't loving the Lord their God with all their heart, mind, and soul, which created access for for um, practice sin, for things that they said, oh, that's okay. You know, that's not a big deal. And it's not that God wants us to be by the letter of the law, but whatever he points, puts his finger on and tells us that that's sin to you, that that is a it's outside of the boundary I have created for you. That's a stumbling block or that's something that I don't like that grieves my spirit or I've told you to go this way and you're going that way. Then that's disobedience. Then it becomes a sin. And when we override whatever that is, then it becomes an iniquitous structure that opens up a gate to the Lord. It breaks. It makes a break in the wall, in the gate, in the fence. So maybe the whole fence isn't down because we see five pieces. We see again in Job, we see his, his, uh, his person. Let me just go back there. We see his person. We see his, um, the things that he had. Let me just go there, Job. So I do not miss it. And I'm going to close here shortly. I just want to, um, go through this. Have not you put a hedge about him and about, so about him, one, about all his house too. When we saw those things came down and Job still did not curse the Lord. The Bible says he was a man of integrity and about, about his house and about all that he has on every side. He had a hedge on every side. And then, so that was all those possessions and things that he had, all that he had. And you have blessed the works of his hand, five, and the substance and his substance. And 
is increased in the land and his substance in, is increased in the land. So everything that Job had was blessed. He had a hedge around everything and no one could touch him. He was a man of integrity. And so when we are talking about building up the wall, because that's where I'm going, because I was praying and he was giving me strategy to pray. How do we build up the wall? How do we repair what is broken so that the enemy cannot come in? We do that through repentance. We do that through um, repentance and asking forgiveness and forgiving others. We do that through prayer and we do that through our words and our actions. So through our obedience, acts of obedience, doing what God told tells us to do and not taking it lightly and going back and repairing those little, it's the little fox, foxes that destroyed the vine. The little things that he told us to do that we haven't done that have given the enemy access. And we're looking for something big because he wants us to repair, to repair it so that we can have the blessings in our lives, in our nation, in our churches, in our cities, in our states. So there are breaches. He showed me that there were breaches and that's how the enemy was coming in. There were breaches in certain churches. There were breaches through different pastors, actions, and elders, and even people, the actions, the tr there's breaches. There have been, the enemy has gotten access, and you can't always see it because it's a spiritual door. So it might be able to look good on the outside, but there's something that has been violated in the spirit that has not been repented of. When Daniel cried out, he repented for not just his, he didn't even have any iniquitous sin. We all sin and fall short, but Daniel had to repent for the sins of his forefathers. He understood that. And this is something that we have known, but he asked for forgiveness. And sometimes we go through the whole repentance with the acts and the forgiveness, and we pray for revival, but we don't do the inner work. And those that are connected to us in our structures do not do the inner work. And, and the Bible says that Job was a um, had integrity. And so some of us um, it says he feared God. There is none like him in the earth, a perfect man that's upright and one that fears God. In another translation, it says integrity. And so some of us ha are asking God, hey, I will talk about myself. Uh, it says, have you thought of my servant Job? No one in the world is like him. He is a man of integrity. He is decent, kind. He fears God and he stays away from evil. And so sometimes we are asking God what it is in our family, in our finances, in our in our churches, our ministries, in our businesses, our jobs, in our lives, in our in our in our communities. Think of the community like the in Chicago. There has been a violation where the enemy has access. There has been a a trespass, a sin structure that was never repented of and that has been repeated in order for the enemy to come in. It can be the way that you use your time. It can be that the Lord said, I want you to wake up at this time and do this because he saw something coming. And instead of obeying him, you left that door open. We don't we don't uh, honor acts of obedience as much as we honor sacrifice. And so tonight, I just want you to take stock, take inventory of your heart and, and where you're at and ask yourself, is there a door open? Is something going wrong? Let me just go back here really quick. Is there is there something that is not right in your life? Let me read down here. So we talked about the five places and then let me just read out loud for us what that looks like. One day when Job, Job's sons and daughters, Lord bless your word, were eating and drinking wine, in their older brother's home, a messenger came to Job. He said, while the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, men from Sheba attacked. They took the livestock and massacred the servants. 
and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, a fire from God fell from heaven and completely burned your flocks and servants. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the Chaldeans formed three companies and made raids on the camels. They took the camels and massacred the servants. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you while they were still speaking, a messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine at their oldest brother's house. When suddenly a great storm swept the desert and struck the four corners of the house, it fell on the young people and they died. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you everything that Job had was touched by him. And then because he didn't curse God, he said, the Lord gives and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked I came for my mother and naked I will return. He has given and he has taken away. Um, Satan came back and got and 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 told God he'll he'll curse you to your face. A man will give everything he has skin for skin to save his life. And so he what he was saying is he still has his life. And so he's thankful for it. He escaped with his life. But if you touch his life and he think he is nigh unto death, I bet you he will curse you, question you, question, are you God? And Job did not question the Lord still. He kept his integrity. He stayed away from evil. He did everything that God knew was in him. And then we know that the Lord blessed him again with new sons and daughters. And I believe the Bible says a new wife and lands and he had more than he had in the, at the end, in the beginning. And God wants to restore someone. God wants to restore. He wants to give you the assignment that you missed out on, what you couldn't do in your latter season because you lacked in your last season because the integrity wasn't there because you were growing in your strength and growing your spiritual muscles. If you will get these things right and stay away from evil and, and, and all these things that the Lord says, let me go up here so I don't misquote it, then he can do this for you. And even when you're tested, if you will stay in your integrity, then he will be able to bless you. And, and so repairs of the breach. Mm. Let's see. A man of integrity, a decent and kind man. He fears the Lord and he stays away from evil. So those were walls that the Lord that Job had in his life that the Lord was able to build upon to create the hedge of his of protection. So character, conduct, and conversation. Job had these things in place. And because he had character, conduct, and conversation in place, then the Lord put hedges of protection around him and blessed everything that he had. And so we know that things have been broken and breached. And it's interesting that it is the it is in this chapter of Isaiah when we hear about the repairs of the breach. And he said, you will be the repairs of the breach. The um, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many race, generations and you shall be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. In some versions, it says they shall be called. So we know that Jesus is the repairer and the restorer, but he also puts that responsibility on us. As we saw in Ezekiel, I look for a man to stand in the gap that wouldn't destroy the land, to make up the hedge, to repair the breach, to rebuild the wall. Same thing here. So he's calling us these here, as he talked about what fasting is, he goes back to a person's integrity, their service, their fear of the Lord, they're doing things right, their, their service and not just their sacrifice. Because when we're serving the Lord in the beauty of holiness, then we're doing it unto him and we're obeying him. But we can do a whole bunch of things he didn't tell us to do. or We can do a whole bunch of religious things and still miss the mark. So missing the mark is a sin if we're not doing what he told us to do. Trespassing, violation, violating other people. 
in any form or fashion, talking about them, doing them wrong, being dishonest, dishonest gain, all these different things. Those are called trespasses. When you trespass somebody else, forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. When somebody trespass in your house or on your land, that means they stepped over a boundary and got into your stuff that don't belong to them. So that is a trespass. So that's a type of sin. Iniquity, as we talked about, is practice sin until it becomes an iniquitous structure that builds itself into your mind and thinking and your way of doing things. It's people that practice fornication, people that divorce over and over again, people that practice adultery, people that watch pornography, people that do things over and over again, and they don't see anything wrong with it. People that curse continually or do all these things that God said is a violation to me. And he's not looking for perfect, but he's putting his hands on things because he wants us to be these people. And I promise I'm going to close, but I just want to, um, oh my God, my God. Okay. 58. I'm going to read this and I'm going to be done. Lord bless your word. Cry loud, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people, their transgressions and the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice that they may delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and you exploit all labors. Indeed, you're fat, you fast for strife and debate and strike with the fist of the wicked. I'm going to go on. Is not down to verse six. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free? And that you break every yoke, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, that's a transgression. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then you then your light shall dumb in the darkness and your darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought. See all these blessings just like Job had and strengthen your bones and you shall be like a well-watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build. For, these are the people. Those from among this group shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day, the whole, the holy day of, of the Lord honorable and shall honor him, not doing your own ways nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that we would each search our hearts tonight and we would see what we need to repair. We would see where the gaps are in our walls, Father God, where the enemy has come into different places, Father God, and by the spirit where there are spiritual holes, um, breaches and tears in our wall, our fence, our gate, whatever we want to call it, the hedge. And we would be those who align our conduct our conversation and our character with the will of God that we would be considered repairers of the breach, that you would give us the tools as we repent, as we obey, as we act out the will of God and not do things our own way in, in the very acts of obedience 
are repairing breaches. It's not just something that you do um, in, it's not just, you know, the, the um, what is it called? The, the instrument or the, the act in, um, in prayer. It's not just the acting out of something when you're in prayer or the religious ritual of doing something. It is a lifestyle. Job had a lifestyle of integrity. He had a lifestyle of fearing God and he had a lifestyle of turning away from evil. He did not make excuses for what he did, but he poured himself out. He lived, as Paul would call it, uh, a life of, uh, an, uh, as his offering unto the Lord, a poured out life, a life spent on Jesus where he laid down what he wanted to do and said, not my will, but your will be done. And in that, that type of sacrifice, when we become the living sacrifice and we're not trying to give things in place of obedience, but we become, our obedience becomes a living sacrifice unto the Lord, holy and acceptable unto him, then we begin to repair the breach. One act of obedience, one act of, uh, of um, repentance, one um, when we have the opportunity to violate someone or violate something or sin, we hold back and we let our flesh die. So we don't do the complain. We don't do the gossip. We don't do the withholding good from somebody when it is in our hands to do right. We don't do that. We don't do strife. We don't do. And when we do, we miss the mark. We repent and get it right. We don't do schisms and isms. All the things, these are the things walking Order our conversation and our conduct rightly. And he says in Psalm 50, I will show you the salvation of God. I will show you this life that I have planned for you. But most of God's will is uh Promises are conditional. If you do, then I do. They're if then statements. And so I just pray tonight for myself as he showed me as I was interceding on behalf of different things, my my own family, my own uh, immediate family, children and different things. And then my church and, and, and ministry, just different things that I was praying about. And he woke me up and gave me this. And so I pray that it would bless you and that would be a strategy for you tonight and going forth in this season, because I truly believe that God has a work. He has assignments. He has things for us to do. And he wants us to be in a secure place where we're not always praying, where we can we can experience what Job experienced. And he began to show me people. And I saw that it's not uncommon. I started this by saying, have you ever met somebody who maybe live a simple life or they're not, you know, doing a million things, but their life just seems to be blessed. They always seem to be happy and joyous and they just seem to be blessed and not stressed. And it seemed like, okay, the kids is good. You know, we talk about counting, you know, trials and all of this, but they just, there's just something yeah, they're living in the goodness of God. There, it's not a, a lot of outer acts. It's a lot of character, conduct, and conversation. They've learned how to control their mouth. They've learned how to meditate in their heart. They have character, integrity. Their conduct is in line with God's will. And those are lives he can bless. And so this is how he wants to build up the hedge. And if the hedges are broken, if there's a place that, that where there's a, 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 a breach, one act of obedience. And it's like when you build a wall, when they were building the wall in Nehemiah, they were warring, but they were building. If we keep on doing the right thing, even when it doesn't feel good, we are sowing in heaven. And sometimes you can do the right things and things will still happen. This is what Job did. We know that that is a test from God and we can pass a test and we can have more in our latter days than we began with. But if there's something that we have done, then we have to build those by those places that were violated. As we saw, even in Isaiah, we have to be the repairers of the breach. And so that is my word for tonight. I pray that I did it justice. Father, I thank you and I praise you. I pray that you would seal this word and that it would be uh, produce a harvest in your people, give them a strategy and new weapons to war with. 
30, 60, and 100 fold return in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank y'all. I pray the message blessed you. I'm going to disconnect. If you have some questions, leave them here and I'll answer them later because I'm on this call. And so I'm going to connect with them. But I pray that you guys were blessed.